Turn it off. All right. So, making sure I have the broadcast started. I do. Cheater slides. So, I don't know that so far. Enjoying the pre presentation on unicorn so far. Um, my name is Jason Wilkerson. Came in from the states. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and, and talk to you all about what I did with IoT uh, using Azure Event Hubs and connecting that up with with XDB. So the customer profile. This is something that as we build site for sites for uh, for marketing organizations, this is really the the thing that we're after. The, the key piece of information that is the cornerstone around. Us, uh, you know, building these uh, user-centric sites and, and um, really personalizing on that. But the, the the biggest thing about knowing this customer profile isn't necessarily so that we can target our products and services to a specific demographic or something like that. Uh, like that. that that's a side benefit that, that we take advantage of. But uh, but really, the the biggest thing to getting this right is so that we're delivering relevant content. So that's really the, the goal that we're after. It's to know, know a user and deliver the most relevant piece of content to that user at that time in that channel. So it's kind of what we're after. <clears throat> Site Corey introduced the experience profile, and this is a, gives us a great start on, on really uh, knowing that customer. We've got page views. Uh, we you know we can see what what uh, users are, are doing online. If you're tagging your content with uh, profiles and, and um, actually leveraging pattern cards, you can start to get a, uh, an idea of the profile for your user. And you can also see actions, uh, see any uh, goals that they may have triggered, or uh, page events that they've triggered, or or campaigns that they've um, been uh, uh, came in on. You know, so the experience profile really is a, a, a great place for us to start. The biggest drawback of the experience profile is that it, it's only capturing online interactions, which is great, don't get me wrong, but that's, only, that's just one segment of how customers are interacting with your brand. So what if we could go beyond web interactions and start to gather information about offline activities, things that, things that, are, that customers are doing, not online, not on a mobile device, not on your website or anything like that, but, but offline activities. So, enter the Internet of Things. It's a concept that's been around for a number of years now, uh, but it's really picked up steam in the last 18 to 24 months or so. Um, but but this is this is kind of the technology that we're gonna that we're gonna leverage here to try to capture some of that offline activity. So the inspiration for this is I don't know in Denmark if y'all do ice fishing or not, but it, it's kind of a big way of life for us in, in uh, the northern United, you know, extreme northern United States, and that's where I'm from. So this past winter, we a few of us in, in our office at NRBA. I came up with this thing, we were going to build a nice house. So we built a nice house, you know, we, we cut it all out, put it together, and put a heater in it, and all that kind of stuff. So it was, it's pretty sweet. But because we're a technology company, we didn't just build a nice house. We connected it to the internet. So we actually had a, a little Raspberry Pi out there. It was connected to a, it was connected to a, a cell phone with some little data plan on it. It was a Wi-Fi hotspot. So, you know, we were dorks. You know, we, we wired up a little button uh, on mounted on the wall. So if you caught a fish, you could hit the hit the button, and it would uh, send out a tweet that you caught a fish. Or you know, you could turn on and off the heat remotely uh, using, uh, and it was it was also using the Azure Event Hubs. So I thought this is such a cool idea. It was so simple to do. Being a Sitecore guy, I thought, okay, how can I take this idea and how can I Sitecore it? How can I integrate that idea with Sitecore and, and try, to, uh, try to make this relevant to users? So I got to work 
that's me in my uh, workshop with the hammers and stuff. Um, so the first thing I did is I had to come up with a scenario. So I, I, I came up with a, a few of them. This took me a, a little while. I came up with a few of them. And the first one I came up with was the idea of some sort of retailer. So I walk into a store, I've got some sort of mobile app or something. Um, and you know they we launched it as soon as I walk in the store or something like that. And as I'm walking around, I'm looking at objects and looking at uh, things online. Um, and I thought it's a little creepy. It's a little creepy that the that the store knows what I'm looking at. So I said, let me try to avoid the creepy factor, and which is kind of a challenge. So I came up with the idea of sports. So uh, a lot of people have Fitbits out there now or, or some sort of activity tracker. And I have recently, uh, I've recently gotten into cycling myself and really enjoyed you know, geeking out on, on all the information that I get from one of my rides. So it tracks all kinds of stuff. It tracks, you know, cadence of the of pedaling speed, you know, just all that kind of heart rate stuff like that. But I thought if I went with an idea like this, and then if if I were to buy some sort of uh, some sort of uh, device that's capturing this data, I'm going to opt into this service. So it kind of solves that problem of a creepy factor because I'm opting into sending my data somewhere. <clears throat> so after I got, came up with the with the scenario, what I was going to do, I came up with the pieces of the solution. What what am I going to have to build to make this work? So this solution has three pieces. Um, it's got the IoT device itself. It's got I'm leveraging uh, notification hubs in Azure, and then it uh, obviously we connect it to Sitecore and the XDB. So I started on the device. So the first thing I had to do, being a software developer and not a hardware guy, um, I had to go out and get one and. and you know, figure out what it was like. You know, what what does it mean to write code for hardware? You, know, you got digital inputs and analog inputs and all this kind of stuff that I had never had to deal with before. So I started with that. After an embarrassingly long time of working with that, I came up with my first solution. Came up with this is my Hello Blinky solution. So just wired up a couple of. A couple of wires to a little little button, turn the LED on and off, uh, that kind of thing. So now that I have obviously conquered the hardware world and I'm now a, a hardware guru, I moved on to the Azure side. So I mentioned that we were leveraging Azure for uh, for for this solution. What we're doing is we're using an, uh, an IoT hub. So the IoT hub is, is the idea is. We're going to let the device send information to the cloud, and then there's going to be a listener uh, out there listening to that hub and processing those messages as they come in. So it was pretty easy uh, to, to get started with this. Um, you just go to the Azure portal. You click on the new button. Uh, there's, a, there's an Internet of Things menu item now. And then uh, select Azure IoT Hub. And when that comes up, really all you got to do is provide a name for your hub and then specify the resource group it's in, um, pick your pricing. Uh, there, I think you, by the default you get one free one. Uh, we use the free one on the Ice House, so I actually had to pay for this one. Um, so once you fill out this information, you click the, there's a little deploy button in the, at the bottom. And once you deploy that, you get you know, a little notification that says that your uh, hub has been deployed, and then you got to go get some information from that hub. So you, uh, from that point, you go in and find your resource group, um, and there, there's a few access policies that are there by default. So I grabbed the IoT hub owner policy and, uh, and picked the connection string uh, out of that, and that's what we use to uh, connect to the notification hub. And that connection string looks a little bit like this. Uh, it's got three key, key pieces of information in there. We've got the host name, obviously. We've got the shared access key name, which
which is the uh, access uh, access role, and you can set up different roles for different levels of access, and then the shared access key. <clears throat> After we create that hub, now I need to go register the IoT device with the hub so that we say that this device is, is allowed to send information to the uh, to, to this IoT hub. So I stuck in that information from the uh, from the connection string into a little config file and um, and wrote a little piece of code in there about um, uh, about actually you know, connecting to the hub and uh, you, you know using that, that connection string information connecting to the hub and actually registering that device. So the two key pieces of information in this, uh, in this little code snippet is we've got the create, uh, create from connection string method call from the registry manager. Registry manager is a part of the Microsoft Azure devices uh, NuGet package. So we open up that connection, create an instance of the registry manager, and then we call, uh, we call add device. So adding that device is what actually registers that IoT device with the hub. So now. Now we're able to, um, well, once we run this, now we're able to actually send and receive data. And then this was a little console app. Once you uh, run, once I run that little app, I'll specify a name for my IoT device, and then it'll return me the, the device key. And that's what you'll need to send uh, with all of your requests uh, to Azure. So now that I've got the, the Azure side done, we move on to the Sitecore side. So on the Sitecore side, um, I created some, uh, I created a profile, created some pattern parts to match my, uh, my three activities. So I've got the cycling, running, and swimming. So I created some pattern parts so we could match, uh, so match on that. I extended the XDB contact so that I could actually store this data. And then uh, I used Sitecore Services Client uh, I created an entity service from there to uh, to call to actually send this uh, IoT uh, IoT device data to Sitecore. So on the profile side, uh, I created a, a profile called Support, and then in there, obviously, I created the, the three uh, the three sports that uh, I talked about. Those patterns for rider, runner, and swimmer. And then I created two more for you know, trying to introduce a little bit of intelligence, albeit very minimally, uh, to say if we're receiving data about uh, both cycling and running, let's let's match that match that user as uh, somebody that might be interested in do athletes. And then uh, if you do all three of them, then you're Superman and you are a triathlete. So now that we've got some of those uh, those profiles and, and pattern cards set up. I moved on to extending the XDB contact. So there are there's three parts to if 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 you haven't done it yet, uh, it, it's pretty simple. But um, there's three parts to, that you need for extending the XDB contact to store custom data. There's an element. So in, in this instance, we created an uh, an interface for iDevice data element that implement or it inherits from I element. That's really kind of the key piece. Uh, to, to store that information, and it really is just it's just got a few fields on there that uh, that are going to store the, the data from that's, that's coming in from uh, from the IoT device. So that's the element. The second piece of that's in, that's important is creating the actual facet. So the facet is going to be the collection of uh, of elements. So it's going to be the collection of, of those instances of that data. So here we just create a collection of, um, of iDevice data element called device data. And then the third piece is patching that into the config. So it's actually creating the config entry uh, for that. So what we've got here is uh, we've got, we specify the two elements. These are the two uh, pieces that we just created. So we've got the iDevice data element. And then we've got the facet itself, so we, we uh, point those out here. And then the actual facets collection uh, uh, right here, we specify this is our new facet, and is it is of type iDevice data. Kind of goes off the screen over there, but 
I promise you, that's, that's right. So that's extending the ICB contact. The third piece on, on the Sitecore side was creating the entity service. So um, <clears throat> if, if who in here has worked with the entity service? So we got a couple of people. So as part of the Sitecore services plan, um, it allows us to, um, you know, we, we, we've got the item web, web API out there that's, that's available for, for uh, um, working with actual content items, but Sitecore Services Client allows us to either work with uh, content items or with custom business objects. So that's what we used here. Um, and so far it's a bit of a theme in, in the presentation. There's three parts to creating an entity service. There's creating the model, the repository, and the controller, and we'll walk through each of those. But there is a, there is a special piece that I, that I had to do here for, uh, since I am connecting this to XCB and, and actually using the tracker, because I had to actually make that that entity service call, um, I had to make that session aware. So by default, the item API and the uh, entity service are they're not session aware, so I don't have access to the tracker. So there's actually a post out there by Pablo Beller that tells us that uh, I use to um, actually make that uh, that entity service service call session aware. So doing this was pretty easy, um, especially when I found a blog post that told me exactly what to do. Um, so the first part is, like I mentioned, there's, there's three parts to creating this entity service. There's creating the model itself, and that's what we're we, we showing here. So I just created a, a support device data model and it inherits from entity identity, so that's that's the key piece on, on this this uh, this picture here. Is in order for it to be an entity used as an entity service model, it uh, needs to inherit from entity identity. So there's nothing magic in in this class. It's just a POCO. It's just storing the data. So the second second part of that is creating the repository. So. Um, I created a support device data repository, and again, the key piece here is implementing the I repository uh, interface and specifying that support device data model or uh, support device data class that we just created. So, specifying the model that you're using. And when you implement that interface, it'll throw in, I don't know, five or six methods add, uh, find, does it exist, delete, those kind of things. So in my case, all I needed to do was um, was Im uh, implement um, does it exist, and I always return false because in my scenario, I'm just sending data to XDB, so I'm not really worried about working with um, you know working with a, uh, data that already exists. So I can just always return false. And then the other piece was the add method. So in the add method. Because I made my, my entity service method session aware, I was able to get a handle on the, the current tracker and grab the contact out of that tracker. And then, uh, as long as that didn't know, we go grab the facet, so that itemized data facet that has the collection. We grab a handle on that and then use the create method to create another instance of that and just um, just put in the information that, we, that, that gets passed in through the model. The third piece of this, uh, the third piece of that stool is the controller. So creating an entity service controller uh, is um, really all you're going to do is inherit from entity service and specify your model, the, in, in our case, the support device data model. Um, if, if all you want to do is you know, nothing special, you're just sending, you're just, you know, just call an add, and add update, or, or whatever those methods are, well, you can leave this empty. There's, there's really nothing else you have to do. In my case, uh, I wanted to do a little bit more than just store the data in XTB. So I actually overrode the create entity method um, and added a couple of a couple of constants in there. But um, but really, all you got to do is, is just create this controller and inherit from entity service. And at that point, you're kind of good to go already. So 
inside the uh, in, inside that that overridden create entity method, this is essentially what I'm doing. So I'm uh, again grabbing the current contact that's, uh, that we're passing in, and uh, getting a handle on that uh, the support profile that's got those patterns in there, and I'm just scoring that based on the support that comes in from the IoT device. From that IoT device, I'm just scoring that um, scoring that profile based on whether it's cycling, running, or swimming. And if if we did have, did end up coming out with a score, uh, a new score, we just uh, we score the profile and then update the pattern. And because I'm simply using uh, the entity service client to uh, to shove this in XDB. This isn't an actual user session that somebody plugged in and, and may continue to do things. I go ahead and call uh, session not abandoned to um, to abandon the session that uh, forces all that data in session to uh, to flush to XDB, uh, flush to Mongo, and then kicks off the aggregation process. So. Uh, the next piece is, so now I'll go into the demo in just a second. Um, so what I did is I created an actual, yes, I'm simulating the IoT device. Um, I know what you're thinking. What the hell? You know, you're supposed to be working on IoT. You went and bought a Raspberry Pi and made a blink, remember? Um, but I figured I'm, I'm coming to Europe from the States, and I figured if I showed up with something that looked like that in my bag, they might kind of give me a hard time, so I uh, just created a little a little WPF client to to, to simulate that IoT device. So this go start up. Let's take a second to start up because it's actually connecting to the Azure Event Hub. So what I've got here is just a, a simple little WPF app. Along the top, we've got our we've got our three sports. So we've got running, cycling, and, and swimming. And then on the left hand side, this is just going to be a log of all the data that I'm sending to Azure. So I'm um, the, you know based on, on what I specify in that top row, it's just packaging patch, packaging that up as JSON, and then sending that to Azure. And then on the right hand side, I mentioned that we uh, also create a listener, uh, so that's actually listening to that IoT hub. We create a listener for that, and that's going to be kind of a log of seeing the data come in from Azure and, uh, and you know, unpacking that and realizing that it's something that we care about in this instance and sends, you know, repackages it and sends it to uh, the Cycle Services client. So from here, we start with swimming. Actually, take that back. I'm going to show you what, what I'm actually doing with this. So I based this on Habitat. Um, seemed to be a cool thing to do. Uh, since everybody's doing it these days, I uh, wanted to figure out what, what, it, what it's like uh, working with Habitat. So I created a new feature in Habitat, um, a little IoT feature. And just by default, it's really nothing special. It's just a piece of content. Uh, it's you know, just a, a picture, a title, and, and some some or maybe some text. Um, so that's what it looks like, you know, by default. That's the default content. So if I go in my so I've set up a few accounts already. So I've got one called Local One at test.com. And I must say that this person, they swam for, well, they swam for a lot. They said a lot for me. So we're going to send that data to Azure. So on the left hand side, you see that, that, we're, uh, that we're specifying an identifier that we're using in XDB as their email address. Probably not the best of identifiers, really, um, but that's what we're using in this case. It's just email address. We're passing in uh, the sport. And then the information from that sport. So we got the distance was 1.3 miles. So we sent that up to Azure. It says uh, it's a data sent successfully. And then over on the right hand side, if you notice that pause, that's actually the listener is running in the background. 
and it heard a message come in to the IoT Hub, uh, found that it was something relevant that we wanted to, uh, to work with, repackaged that up, sent it to Sitecore, and it was sent successfully. So if I go look at my little bit habitat again, I'm going to log in. One word, one letter password. I'll give you two guesses at what that is. Um, and we see we, we're, we just changed the content. We're, we're just using the personalization engine uh, to read that XDB contact and figure out what, if they've matched any patterns. And we're showing some, some information about the, the swimmer. So I'm going to close that. Now let me send some data for I've got another kind of local two. Say they ran a bunch. We'll send that up to Azure too. So you see, again, like first time, it was sent out to Azure. The listener heard that it came in, repackaged that up, and sent it to Sitecore. So now if we go look at Log in with that account. Navigate to our IoT feature. Again, nothing special. We're just using the personalization engine, um, showing some, some data for a runner. And the last scenario I'll run up is I'll send some data about all three to a different account. So I'll we'll send some cycle data. So let me just swipe a little bit to you. So now that we've set all of that, how long is that person? navigate to our IoT feature. And we're not showing anything about cycling because this person submitted data and matched, based on those, those pattern cards that we set up in that score profile, matched all three of them. Now we were only scoring on cycling, running, and swimming, but because it matched, but because it, he, this person had been scored on all three of them, it also matched that, uh, that triathlete uh, pattern. So we show some of that. So move back to presentation. So you may be thinking, what's next? There really is a lot that you can do kind of on that IoT front. But this wasn't intended to be a really compelling business case. Really what it was, it was intended to be was just use your imagination. It was intended to kind of get the, get the juices going. Um, just think about ways that you could leverage this, this technology to gain more insight into your customer and, and, and how they're interacting with your brand in offline channels. So just use your imagination. Some of the uh, some of the blog posts I use to kind of help me with this, um, the Cycler Services client, I uh, used a, a post from Mike Robbins. He'll be doing another uh, IoT presentation tomorrow about iBeacons and some of that creepy stuff. <laughs> um, so he'll have a, a presentation tomorrow. Uh, but I use his, his post on that uh, creating that entity service um, 
tracking the untrackable is the part about making the, the, the entity service client method session aware uh, so that you could access the tracker from Pavel Veller. And then Nick Wesselman, he had a great post on uh, extending the XDB contact. So, questions? Well, given that I'm not a native Minnesotan, I'm from Texas, I'm from the South. I'm actually a Packer fan. Oh, very good, very good. So, good answer there. And uh, so, the real question is: is obviously this is just a uh, just touched on what you can do when you kind of put all these pieces together, mm -hmm. and that's the point I think is your imagination. Right? And it sounds like. Uh, I mean, do you, do you see anything coming up from the fact that it's going to be easier to query all of these extra facets, the facets, uh, the, the actual additional pieces that you add, the same way that you were talking about adding them, will eventually be on the interactions table in Mongo, you'll be able to utilize like link to a senior um, to get to it quickly and to develop your own reports. What are maybe some of the, the things you're seeing that you'd like to work on? Past this, yeah. Um, in, in this scenario, I actually stored the the, the support the device data in Mongo. Technically, that probably wouldn't belong in the contact record, um, but I had not extended the the XDB contact data, so I figured, hey, why not do that do it that way? Um, so um, I, I think the X Connect client is coming in uh, in eight point three, I believe. Uh, is really going to allow for a lot more, um, a lot easier interaction and, and customization of, of the of using that that XDB contact, and then uh, you know accessing that data through X Connect, uh, either you know looking we'll up the Power BI or something like that. I think is is really where some of that power is going to come. So does that answer your question? Okay. Other questions? Um, yeah, I just wonder what's it actually using the entity service over just using standard entity control and rules? Why would I want to use entity service? Um, I did it mainly to get to Tracker and then found that Tracker wasn't there. So um, I, it, it's, it's another one of those things where I hadn't done it before. So I wanted an, an excuse to do it. So um, I saw that uh, Mike Robbins also did another. Um, Another deal with using Sitecore services client to uh, get that data into Sitecore. So why not go that way? I, I don't know that there's any necessarily a benefit um, to using entity service over just a standard MVC controller. Apart from that's kind of why the, the services clients there and the ability to interact with those uh, custom business objects. So other questions. If you do have any other questions that come up, um, I, I can, I'm on Twitter and Slack with Raw Corn Taco, or there's my blog on citizensite.com. So, any questions, just, just shoot them to me, and I'd be happy to, to uh, research those to you. Thank you.